Hello to everyone. My name is Javier Gonzalez. I'm the campaign advocate for making cities resilience in Uruguay. And I want to share to you uh, investment in, in our country. Uruguay is a country located in the southern corner of South America, as you can see here. The political divisions of Uruguay is in departments. Uh, we have 19 departments. We are uh, with three levels of government, national government, departmental government, and municipalities. Uh, as you can see, here we have a river called River Black that divides the, the country into, uh, into regions. The climate, it's about 70 centigrade degree in average, and it's temperate and humid. The four seasons are clearly differentiated, and the Rio, uh, Rio Negro, as I told you, the Black River, divides the country into clearly differentiated, uh, differentiated climate zones. The north with a subtrop subtropical uh, climate, and the south with a maritime behavior. The topography of Uruguay is slightly rolling land and plains, as you can see in the map here. Oh, sorry. Here is, there are the peaks of the country. Here we have the plains and all around the slightly uh, rolling uh, land. This is the peak of the country, it's about a little bit of uh, 500 meters uh, high, and the average is 100 meters high. Some typical cultural features of Uruguay are the meat, the mate, the carnival, the great football players, and sand and sand, sand and sand tourism along its coast. The main hazard in Uruguay are these four we, we are, oh, sorry. These four is the draw, flood, and tornadoes, and rocks. We call uh, this practice a good practice because in the places San Gregorio Polanco in the inner uh, of the country, the location of the case is in the middle of the country as you can see, and San Gregorio is in the south of, of the department, with the limits with the Rio, Rio Negras, as I told you. This is the San Gregorio de Polanco maps. And the highlights of this case are the development of a DRR public investment project that has been successfully applied uh, to a small town. The inhabitant continuous claim made all levels of government, government get involved. And in spite of political difference in some levels of government, the project was successfully uh, launched. That's what I want you to uh, keep in your mind, these three highlights, these three topics. The historical summary since 1945 was when uh, the building of the hydropower plant was, uh, was built. Uh, it changed all around San Gregorio of, of Pol uh, de Polanco. Uh, the building of the hydropower plant and its reservoir led towards uh, means of transport and communication. But the, these problems were solved by a public investment, the National, uh, the National Route 43. The sand and sand got strengthened 
and it was first visited by tourists from the same department. In the early 90s, tourists from the whole country choose uh, that location. And in the most recent years, European and American tourists find this resort as uh, uh, so attractive. That's why it's important of this uh, case, because you will see now that the socioeconomical profile of the town is the sun and sun tourism. The fishing as a way to earn a living, the sun mining, handmade craft, and the cultural side of San Gregorio Falango is regarded as an open sky museum. But the, the main one is the sun and sun tourism. What kind of risk faced by San Gregorio de Polanco? We have socio-natural hazards. This socio-natural hazard is the level of the, of the reservoir and rainfall intensity have led to flooding. As you can see, the, the photo in the left-hand side, uh, when the situation is normal, and here with the, with the level of, of water is high. The natural hazard, the strong uh, winds have led to coastal erosion, as you can see here. Check and compare the, the photos, the pictures you have. And the vulnerabilities are the town design. The town design is from south to the north, and it gets the impacts of the wind from the southeast. Wrong location of some buildings. We just see these uh, pictures. If you see this building, in the normal situation, doesn't, uh, nothing happens. But with flooding, uh, the, the altitude of the water is uh, highly increased, and it gets uh, the building here. As you see, this, this picture was taken three years ago, and this picture was taken two, two months ago. Then uh, the people still uh, making buildings in the side of the, uh, of, of the beach with that, with that hazard, the flooding. Which are the proposal of solutions? Well, the building of barriers called gabions and the recovery of beach wide and sand quality. This combined project, uh, the first one was carried out by the departmental government of Tacuarembó and this, the other one was, uh, uh, was taken by the Public Investment Office and the Ministry of Environment of Uruguay. Some measures of the erosion and flooding impacts. In 35 years, the losses of land were about 10,000 square meters, and the taxes losses per year were about $65,000 as a proxy. The investment along coastland, it will uh, construct uh, gabions and other infrastructure, as you can see in here. and down here. This picture is from Dominican Republic uh, that shows this uh, building that is in a normal uh, situation. The gabions you can see here, and when it's the level of water is high, you can see it's that it uh, limits the, the coastal or mitigates the, the coastal erosion. The expected benefits of this project is improvement of touristic offers, the regulation of lands, the improvement of inhabitants' labor conditions, and increase of taxes revenues for the department. Well, I, here I show the credits of this uh, investment is the government of Tacuarembó and the investment office and uh, environmental uh, ministry, okay? Thank you.